Verse 9, the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, <laughs> a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, going back up a bit in verse 5, the Bible says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And then he says, A unholy priesthood uh, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to read other scriptures that speak of the same words, a royal priesthood in the Bible. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. Exodus chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure, hallelujah, to me above all people. Then he says, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. Hallelujah. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So these are promised to the children of Israel. They be a kingdom of priests. Amen. Let me read another one in the past. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. Uh, this is about Jesus Christ. He says, and speak to him, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12 to 14, and speak to him, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. 13. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall be, bear the glory, shall sit on the rule, uh, sit and rule on his throne, and he, Jesus, shall be a priest on his throne. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing there a priest, Jesus, a priest, and a king on his throne? Now, let's now finally go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5 to 6 in the future. The Bible says, And from Jesus, who is the faithful witness and the first uh, begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, to him that loved us and washed us from his from our own sin, from our sins in his own blood, verse six, and he has made us kings and priests to God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Notice those two words, king and priests. Praise the Lord. So we are looking at a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. And we have seen the terms that are used, the terms that are used are kingdom of priests, royals, and priestly people. Praise the Lord. Kings and priests in first in uh, sorry in Revelation chapter one verse five six, Hallelujah. And we see that this is a kingdom that is full of priests. It's a kingdom for priests. The kingdom of God is a kingdom for priests. Hallelujah. In other words, to be in the kingdom. You have to be a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But today, I've come to announce to you that if you are born again, 
you are a priest. Amen. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. So if you are born again, lady and gentlemen, welcome to priesthood. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you are a what? A priest. Are we talking, what are we talking about? We are talking about our identity in Christ. You are a priest. Amen. Ladies, you are priests. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You are priests. There is neither male or female, Jew or Gentile. You all are priests. Amen. Amen. Are you a priest? <laughs> now, I want to tell you from the beginning, from the onset, it was God's intention to have a kingdom of priests out of the entire nation of Israel. Hallelujah. God has always wanted a kingdom of priests. And you see, in Exodus, he had redeemed them to go and worship him. He redeemed them so that they go and become a kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. He brought them to himself so that they be a kingdom of priests. Now, this teaching on the kingdom of priests, I'm going to split it into two. Amen. I want to talk about priests because there's a lot to talk about priests. And then I want to talk about, finally, I'll talk about kings. Amen. Let me begin with talking about priests. So who are priests? They are men and men who are commissioned, males who are commissioned by God uh, um, uh, to, to act as uh, the mediators. Those men who are, will bring uh, humans, you know, closer to God and bring God close to, to human beings. Praise the Lord. They brought God, God close and they, brought, uh, they got, uh, brought God close to human beings and uh, brought human beings close to God. They were like an access of God, amen, to, to, to human beings. Praise the Lord. Those were priests and there were duties for these priests and the main duty of the priests were to offer sacrifices. That's why in the Old Testament you see a lot of physical uh, sacrifices being offered, lots of animals being killed, and they were the only people who were entitled to offer these sacrifices because it was the requirement of God for you to sacrifice before you, you know, you connect. Amen. Hallelujah. You could not just come before God without a sacrifice. You had to offer a sacrifice. Amen. So for there to be peace between you two. Amen. Hallelujah. These priests ensured that worship was kept in the right way. They uh, 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 were worshipers. Amen. Praise the Lord. And part of this worship was the sacrifice that they used to uh, uh, offer. You see, they kept the temple running. Mm? The temple was kept alive because the priests were there and they were working in the temple. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was one man uh, among them who was called the high priest. And the high priest would finally, once a year, during the Day of Atonement, go in the Holy of Holies and offer sacrifices. Praise the Lord. First for himself on, on the outer court and then uh, on, on the altar and then go in and offer, uh, um, you know, sprinkle blood on the mercy seat and from there come out if he comes out alive, amen, and come out and bless the people of God. So those were what the priests were doing. The priests were intercessors. They'd intercede for others, praise the Lord. They'd offer prayers. Oh God, let the next year be a year of blessing. Oh, Lord, let the next year be a year of favor. Oh, let the next year, that's what they used to do, used to do for others, amen. Priests were learners and teachers, amen. They were disciples and yet also taught in the temple. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to just take us on a journey in the Bible on this priest in a very simple way so that we understand who these priests are. So then when we talk about us as royal priesthood, we understand who we are. Praise the Lord. Now, 
The first time we see the word priest used in the Bible is in the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. And it is used uh, talking about a, 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 a priest called Melchizedek. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Melchi means king. Zedek means righteousness. So he was a king of righteousness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm beginning by talking about the priestly order of Melchizedek by first defining who this guy is. Melchizedek was a man who, you know, he happened to appear in the Old Testament as a, a, a many believe or many see him as a, the pre-incarnated Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. And he's a man who Abraham went and offered uh, a tithe, a tenth of what he had. If you read in Hebrews chapter 7, you'll see the whole story there in Genesis chapter 14. Hallelujah. Now, this order of, of, of priestly uh, 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 of, uh, um, duty, or, or this order of Melchizedek combines the kingship and the priestly duties. He was both a king and he was a, a priest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can go to Hebrews chapter 7, I show you. Melchizedek, praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, are you seeing? King of Salem, then saying, priest of the most high God. King of Salem and priest of the most high God. And then there's the story of Abraham there. <laughs> Have you seen that? Hey, guys, you can see. So there is priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, after the law, kingship and priesthood were separated after the law came. So there were priests and they were kings, but priests were coming from a particular tribe, the tribe of Levi. Amen. And kings were also coming from a particular tribe, the tribe of, of Judah, during the time of the law. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, there were two kings who had tried to offer sacrifices, and God punished them. <laughs> Severe. They were punished. You remember Saul? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He lost his kingdom. There's another king, King Uzziah. You remember he was stricken with leprosy. Hallelujah. Because he tried to perform priestly duties and yet he was a king. As we continue in the journey, we see there was a time in Exodus chapter 13 where firstborn males were set apart. God had instructed that they set apart firstborn males to, be, to stay consecrated. And we believe that that was for priestly for the priest to them for them to offer or to perform priestly priestly duties and later on something else happened praise the lord we see god now choosing a particular tribe amen the tribe of levi and this tribe of levi is the tribe that finally became the priests in the tabernacle we'll look we we'll look at that when we when you're looking at the book of exodus praise the lord Hallelujah. I'm just summarizing for us so that we see. Remember the time of the golden calf idolatry. In Exodus 24, the story is there. The, the, there was a selection or setting apart of the tribe of Levi. The firstborns, you know, the, the, the males of the tribe of Levi who will be the ones who are entrusted to work in the tabernacle of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So during the, the law, so we have another order. <laughs> Amen. Not the order of Melchizedek, but of Levi, of the tribe of Levi. And I want to call it the order of Aaron, priestly order of Aaron. Because now Aaron's family, among that tribe, Aaron's family that was selected, was the one that was selected to be the line, the one that the line of the high priests will come from. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Read the tribe of Levi in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 5, where they are selected 
to the priests to carry out priestly duties. Praise the Lord. And therefore, the royal line maintained was maintained um, in the tribe of in the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, what I've come to tell you today is that there's a restoration of the priestly order because there's a change of the covenant from the old covenant, the covenant of the Old Testament, yeah, the covenant of the law, back to the priestly order of Melchizedek with Jesus Christ, back to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the high priest, and we are priests. We, the believers, are priests in the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, we are in the new covenant, and God's agenda still stands of having a kingdom of priests, not just priests, <laughs> not, those, not just those who are priests separate and those who are kings separate, but a kingdom of priests. Jesus Restore the order. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you remember what Melchizedek did after Abraham uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, paid the tithe? You remember what he did? He, he blessed him and they ate holy communion. You remember? Bread and wine. Isn't it Jesus <laughs> who did the same? Hallelujah. Bread and wine as it was given by who? Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. So this is something that Jesus is doing. Jesus restores. Today we have a high priest. We have a high priest, not like Aaron. No. We have a high priest who is the king of kings. You see, high priests in the Old Testament were next to kings. No, they, they, they were just <laughs> near, near kings. They were high in authority, near kings, but they were not kings. There was another king. Amen. But today we have a high priest who is the king. Praise the Lord. We'll talk about kings and the roles of kings next time, when we, uh, next Sunday. Praise the Lord. And the Bible declares in Revelation 1, 5 and 6 that we are a royal priesthood. Amen. We are a royal priesthood. We are both priests and, and kings. The way Melchizedek was a king and priest. So are we kings and priests. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to tell you guys you are a priest. And, and one of the things that I've come to do is not to give you information, nice information. I've come to tell you what a priest does so that you start living like one. You start identifying and living as one. And you'll enjoy yourself. I'm so, I'm so surprised that God has already gone before me and has already demonstrated what a priest is supposed to do. Now, let's look at Jesus, the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. You see Melchizedek resembling Christ. Hebrews 7, verse, chapter 7, uh, verse 11 to 12, 2. Okay, we can start with 5. 5, verse 9. Ah, the Bible says, uh, Hebrews chapter 5. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that be obeyed him. And 10 says, called of God an high priest, that is Jesus, after the order. <laughs> Are you seeing? Jesus, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. This is just proof. I'm giving you proof. Verse 11 and if, verse 11, 7, chapter 7, verse 11, if therefore perfection were by Levitical priesthood, for under the people received the law, interest people received the law, where further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. So you can see two orders there. Priests under the order of Melchizedek and priests under the order of Aaron. So the one we are talking about, Jesus being, under, being a priest under the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And I want to tell you that this priestly a, a, a line continues forever. It continues forever through Jesus Christ. Jesus rose as the ultimate priest 
in the order of Melchizedek. He existed before. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he continues in his priestly duty. He is the royal priest. Do you also know that Jesus came from the tribe of Judah? You know that? <laughs> That's why, not the tribe of Levi, no, the tribe of Judah. Priest in the order of Melchizedek, yet a king of the tribe of Judah. Let me show you some other interesting things. At the cross of Jesus, Jesus performed the duty of a priest, and Jesus also performed the duty of a king. You know, kings conquer and priests offer sacrifices. At the cross, Jesus offered a sacrifice for men, and he became the sacrifice for all humanity at his cross. Praise the Lord. Jesus at the cross conquered, death conquered, the devil conquered, sin, praise the Lord, and took back authority as a king. Colossians chapter 2, go and read. Mm. <laughs> Jesus, the king and the priest, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let me show me show you some few things in in uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter five verse seven. Hebrews is very Hebrews is a very nice book. Hebrews chapter five verse seven. Uh, it's actually some people call it the New Testament uh, Le uh, uh, um, Leviticus. <laughs> Hallelujah! You know Leviticus. The book of Leviticus is where God set up the worship system after He got them out of Egypt, Exodus. The, Levitical, uh, the, the book of Leviticus, now he sets up worship. You know, after you are out of, of Egypt, when you're brought out, the first thing is worship. Worship system. That's the first thing before prosperity and before Canaan, you know, and, and the land flowing with milk and no, worship first. You know, Jesus, in uh, Hebrews 5, 7, the Bible says something there that he, he offered in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers. Are you seeing intercession there? Priestly duty. Offered up prayers and supplication with strong cryings and tears unto him that was able to save him from that and was heard in that. He feared he offered a prayer. And we, now I'm, I'm talking to us. Just as Jesus is the high priest and we are priests under his order, praise the Lord, in the order of Melchizedek, we also are called to prayer. Men and women, are you a priest? Are you born again? Yes. Are you a priest? Yes. Are you called to prayer? Yes. Amen. A call to prayer today in Jesus' name. Matthew 6, the Bible talks about when you pray. Not if you know. When you pray. When you pray. Amen. The Bible says in, uh, in, in Acts chapter 2, that they continued in the apostles' doctrine <laughs> and the breaking of bread and prayers. It's something that should continue. Continue. We should continue in. This is part of who we are. This is part of our lives. Prayer is part of our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We are supposed to continue to offer up prayers, intercessions supplications unto God every day of our, our lives. Are you a priest? Are you a priest, guys? Yeah. I and your prayer is part of the duties of a priest, as I had already read earlier. Now, Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 14, let's look at it, Hebrews 9, 14, did something else here, verse 14. He says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. <laughs> Priests are called to offer sacrifices. Praise the Lord. And guess what? You know, people nowadays talk a lot about altars, altars. You know, sacrifices are offered on altars. I want to tell you that, that we no longer uh, have an physical altars out there. The altar is Jesus Christ. Look at, look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 10. Is it chapter 13? 13 verse 10. 
We will study the book of Hebrew. I'm just showing you some few things today. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10, the Bible says, We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. <laughs> now look at verse 10. Verse 15 now explains who the altar is. It says, by him. By Jesus. By him. Jesus is the altar upon which the sacrifices are offered. Praise the Lord. He is the altar. Today I've, I've really enjoyed the worship. You know, this guy, you know it is, they were used to set the altar up and God brings the fire. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He is the one who sets it on fire. Do you remember the Pentecost? When fire came on those living sacrifices. Praise the Lord. The sacrifice of Jesus when he sacrificed was full, was sufficient. So there is no need to continue to offer cuckoos and mbuzis. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is mambos and mbuzi na kuku in your homes? Those traditional sacrifices, forget them. Today, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He offered himself up. He knew God would accept his sacrifice. And he offered it up. And God accepted it. And it was a sacrifice for eternity. Amen. So we come to God offering other kinds of sacrifices, not the physical sacrifices. All our weaknesses, all our, all, all our sin, every shame and guilt was dealt with at the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. And guess what that gave us? An access to God. Do you remember after that, the, to the temple curtain was torn? From top to bottom. Hakuna mutu alirarua yo curtain verse. Top to bottom means no one, no one tore it from below. up going up. No. Top to bottom Hallelujah, praise the Lord. His body was the veil. And now we, when the temple curtain was torn, it means that God no longer is just in the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can access him. We can enter his presence any time, anywhere, just as priests used to. <laughs> Are you priests? Now you can enter the presence of God. You have access to God. You don't need to go to any confession box. No. No, 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 no. Jesus, we have access. In Hebrews 4.16, I'm, I'm just in the book of Hebrews today. Hebrews 4.16 says, Therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly to the throne. You can enter boldly. Not because you are good, no. But because Jesus was good and he made, he offered himself as a sacrifice. Amen. And you can enter anytime. <laughs> anytime. You have access through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I couldn't have professionals here. No. There are no professional priests. We who are born again, we are the priests of God. We need no priests to, we are born into it. We are not taught into it. No, we are born into priesthood. There is no tribe, particular tribe anymore, anyone who is born again enters priesthood. There is no particular gender anymore at the male gender or firstborns. No, everyone who is born again is the firstborn of God. They can enter into the priesthood. In this priesthood, we do not forbid to marry. Praise the Lord. Tafuta bibi. Amen. Tafuta buana. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, we don't forbid to marry. In this priesthood, we marry, praise the Lord, and, and get married for the ladies. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. In this priesthood, we don't have special clothing, no? We dress smartly, amen, as priests of Jesus Christ. This is the order of Melchizedek. Don't bring the Levitical order here. <laughs> we are priests in the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And just as priesthood continues, the priesthood of Jesus continues, the sacrifices also continues. There is the physical sacrifice that was stopped, but we continue to see some sacrifice that continues to be offered. Hallelujah. Psalms 134, very interesting psalm. The Bible says, 
Bless the Lord, ye servants of the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord, lifting up holy hands. Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine? Priests used to stand by night. They, they used to take turns. One takes a, a, a turn in the night up to some certain watch. Another one comes, takes some turn. Another one takes some turn to keep the worship up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are no pianos. There are no drum sets. There are no drum kits. No, they were just hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And let me, in their hands, stand by night lifting up holy hands. And, to the, and that's why they used to see glory. They used to see victory. <laughs> Are you seeing? Guys, that's how they used to see. You remember Moses when they went to, uh, uh, the Israelites went down to, to war and he, him, he was up. Hallelujah. What happened? As long as his hands were up, what is that? Worship. As long as his hands were up, they were winning. They were winning. Guys, is your worship up? Is your worship up? You are a priest. Is your worship up? <laughs> are your hands up? Amen. Could it be that some of the things you're struggling with, uh, some of the things that are down in your life are because your hands are down and your mouth is closed? Should your mouth be opened? <laughs> Should your hands be up as the priests of God? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. Glory. It's a sacrifice. This, no sacrifices don't... No, when an animal is being killed, it doesn't feel good. No. You, again, when you are offering that sacrifice, it doesn't feel good. It has nothing to do with feeling. Oh, I feel good, so I worship the Lord. No. When I feel bad, oh, Lord, niache. No. It's a sacrifice. Worship is a sacrifice. You don't only do it when you are fine. No, you do it even when you are not fine. When you're not feeling good, worship a sacrifice. First Peter 2.5 explains the kind of... It says, we offer up spiritual sacrifices. So I've already begun to explain to you these spiritual sacrifices. Praise the name of the Lord. Spiritual sacrifices. He, Romans 12.1, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the... I beseech you, I beseech... <laughs> <laughs> by the masses of God to what? Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. This generation need to be told that. Offer your bodies. Offer your eyes. Offer your ears. Offer your mind. Offer everything about you as a living sacrifice. Let that body stay on the altar. <laughs> Praise the Lord and let the fire come and burn. Praise the Lord. We are talking about holy living, right living, righteous living. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Forget the temptations of the body. Offer that body today as a living sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, these animals were killed. This body needs to die. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm not saying you kill it. I'm just saying offer it. Put it. Let the appetites and everything about it that we want to take you out of that altar die. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's how it will be renewed in our minds. The Bible says, and be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. To be able to discern the will of God. Someone is looking for the will of God. That's how you get the will of God. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Let your mind be renewed. Amen. And then you'll discern. Things will just become clearer and greater and better. Praise the Lord. <laughs> ah, by him, let us offer Hebrews 13, 15. Let us offer sacrifices of... You see, praise is a sacrifice. People who do not offer praise are proud. You either praise or you are proud. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are not a praiser, you are a proud person. You are saying it is me. 
Where I am is because of me. What I have done is because of me. Amen. We offer sacrifices of praise. It's for you to o offer. Not the worship leader to offer on your behalf. You offer. The worship leader is not a priest. On, there are no priests on behalf of others, no. We all have access. We offer sacrifices of praise unto God. And we are categorically, the scripture says, it is the fruit of our lips. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. The fruit of our lips. So your lips can produce fruit. Mm. Praise fruit. The fruit of our lips. Another thing, thanksgiving. This giving thanks. The Bible continues to say doing good and sharing all these as sacrifices that we offer as priests and to, and to God. Doing good, even when bad is done to you, that's a sacrifice. And when you share out of what you have, it's a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Thanksgiving, giving is a sacrifice. Praising is a sacrifice. Praising him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you're full of praise, you'll be full of God. You will be full of God. God's presence will always go with you. That's why this church is the way it is. You walk in, you enjoy his presence and his power. Hallelujah. Without reservations. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. So we are called to the priestly ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the priestly ministry. You are priests of God. You should be learning priests. You sit down and learn the word of God to teach. Be up to teach. You should be praising priests. You should be praying priests. You should be worshiping priests. Amen. Hallelujah. Interestingly, you are a priest and you are also a temple of the living God. You know that? We are going to be talking about that later on. You are a priest and yet a what? A temple. So why should your temple be closed? Wo umefunga temple? Wo umeenda nyumbani? And yet corona. Umefunga temple umeenda nyumbani. And yet there should be praise flowing out. You are the priest in your temple. Your body is it's your body. You are inside. You are in the temple. That temple should be active, busy, praising Sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. There's someone inside saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God all the time. Hallelujah. Psalms 29 talks about in his temple, verse 9, in his temple everyone shouts glory. glory. I want to welcome someone today, every day, every moment, every minute of your life as you walk, just say glory. glory. You are keeping your temple Alive. Amen. <laughs> the temple is alive. We are pouring oil. You know, the priests actually, they had to maintain the lamp and they had to maintain the altar. You know, God lit the fire and they had to continue to put firewood there so that it keeps burning. The, 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 uh, 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 there was the lamp um, 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 in, the, in the holy place where they would pour oil. Amen. They kept pouring oil. So Kianza Kwenda down, they pour oil, they keep pouring oil. That's the work of the priests. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. We are priests in our homes, in our houses. Yeah? These temples, we are priests. Let me tell you, keep the fire burning. Keep the lamp alive by worshiping, by praying. Add the kuni. Study the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Know the word. And let me tell you, you will be blazing. You will be that light, that temple that is shining the light to your generation. Hallelujah. We are priests. We are priests. And we are a kingdom of priests. I want to finish by saying this. That it is the priestly ministry comes before the kingly ministry. 
because kingly ministry is authority. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you do not, if it's simple, when you are priestly, if you can't conquer that, you can't say praise the Lord, you can't worship God, you can't study the word, how do you expect to rule? Even your own personal life, how do you expect to rule? We run, learn how to reign by becoming priests. Praise the Lord. By offering sacrifices. When you offer sacrifices, we are defeating. We have already started our kingly ministry. We begin to defeat ourselves. I am defeating me. <laughs> and I'm beginning to win. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when you learn to pray, when you learn to, to worship, you are qualifying for rule. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I'm trusting God for burning bushes walking. <laughs> Temples that are alive. When you greet someone, someone just senses the presence of God. You know why? Because you are always in the hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.